so now that you're sterile, you're getting ready to drape your patient, this is when you're gonna break sterile field the most, probably. So once you're sterile, you wanna keep your hands below your chin and above your waist. So it's fine to have them like this, like this. You can do a little praying mantis or like the little ferret guy. Um, and you can do like a short cross. You don't wanna do like a big arm hug. You don't wanna touch your back or really your sides. If you can help it, they're just kinda of like crossed in here like this. That should be fine or like this. And then I like to smooth out kind of the front of my gown because one of the ways that you'll commonly break serenity is if your gown's kind of puffy, you might bump into it by accident. You won't even feel it. And then you drape everything, you come back, and then that dirty area is now right on your surgical site. So you want to avoid that. This is a very common area to, to do that, is to bump your waist and your hips. So the way that I prevent myself from doing that is when I approach it, forward facing like this, just like when you scrub and your kind of butt's back, it's gonna stay back until your drape is on and you can approach the table. So your butt's still kind of back when you're reaching to do stuff. It's a little bit awkward, right? And when you do the sides, so when you go to place your drapes, what I'll do is kind of get like a power leg near it and then I don't, don't move my hips towards the table, okay? So you, from here, reach and place, for example, when you place your towel so that you can reach and place this and protect this space. Otherwise, a lot of times what your inclination is to do something like this, boom, I touched, I broke sterility right here. So it's good. And then when I come into the backside, same thing. I just kind of get my leg, get my leg ready, get my towel ready, and I reach like this to bring it around. Okay. So just be sure to keep distance between your hips and the table. Another common place to break sterility is fingers and hands. And so that's why we teach you to fold and place these towels in a very specific way. What we want to do is make sure that, that our hand or our fingers are never directly between the non-sterile field here and our towels. And so that's why when we hold it, we hold it such that our hands are completely covered by the towel. You can't see it at all there. And so I'm able to safely place my hands down and then just drop the towel when I'm ready. And so you can see from the back side here, my hands are completely covered so that if I, anything that I touch with the towel is still gonna keep my hands sterile. So I kind of plant my thumbs here and then I just let go with my fingers, just kind of sprinkle out those edges. One mistake people make is they think, oh, we'll roll our hands in, roll our hands out. You don't wanna do that. See, you're breaking sterility there. So you just place it and then let it go. You don't, you don't tinker with it or anything. It's not worth breaking sterility. You don't want to throw it and just drop it like that. You want to place it down controlled and just make sure your fingers are covered so that you can place it controlled safely without breaking sterility. And you just want to flick those corners off. Okay, good. So we're going to get started. So now that you know that, watch your fingertips and you should be constantly monitoring yourself. So if this was your patient on sterile day, you're going to have to drape by yourself because you're scrubbing while your surgical assistant is prepping and then by the time you come they go to prep or to scrub themselves and you're ready to do your patient drape. So you start with towels and the towels are folded kind of like an accordion that way into thirds and then they're folded like an accordion into fourths that way. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that so that you can refold them if you want to practice at home. So when I grab these, I'll usually grab my towel, step away from the table, okay? Because I don't want to drag my towel by accident or something like that or let it dangle. So what I'm doing is my hands are always in the sterile field. I'm staying sterile. I grab my towel and then I do it very much more controlled. I'll pinch it, shake it out in front of me this way. Okay, and then what you want is to have one of these folded edges, just one folded edge, keep that edge folded. The folded edge should always be facing the patient. Okay, so if you finish a prep and you notice that you've got a folded edge up, it means you put it down backwards. It's not the end of the world, it's not ideal for sterility. So I've got my fold away from me, and then I'm gonna pinch like, oak, like just finger and thumb. So I'm not, it's not like a death grip, okay? When I rotate, I'm not moving the towel. I'm, I'm able to move my fingers around while keeping the cow, towel in the same place. That's a little bit important for the next step, okay? 
So you've got it like this, okay? And then the next thing you're gonna do is curl your fingers in like you're making a fist, okay? So you curl your fingers in like you're making a fist, then you bring your palms up, okay? And this is where I'm rotating my fingers but not pinching. So if I pinched, it would look like that. I don't want that. I just wanna rotate my fingers and then I've got my palms up. I'm gonna flip my fingers back that way, okay? And you can adjust so that your fingers aren't peeking up over the top. You kind of want it a little bit hidden there. And then the next thing you do is just rotate your wrist. And your, your thumb can let go because you're pinching with these two. Once you rotate, boom. So now I have a very a completely protected hand. And I can go ahead and place this. And typically, I'll go and place it. I get my thumbs kind of like a kickstand on the table, and then I'll use my hands to just put it right where I want it, okay? So I'm not touching the patient yet, but I'll just, and then once I touch the patient, I just let it go. And so common mistakes are, you roll your hand, you don't want to do that. My fingertip is facing the sterile, the non-sterile stuff. So you just want to drop it and let it be. If it's not completely perfect, I don't want you grabbing it and fixing it because you could break sterility doing that, not worth it. Later, if you do have to fix it, it's okay if you lay here and I'm like, oh, it's too close. It's fine to move your towel away because you're still dragging the cleanest edge away. But what you don't want to do is, let's say, you know, this edge here is dirty. I don't want to move this, that dirtiness closer to my surgical site. So you should never move your towel toward after you've placed it. You shouldn't move it towards your incision site. Okay, so I'll grab my next towel. I'm gonna to do the same thing. Dropped it, I've got my fold down. Okay, I'm gonna do my pinch, curl, rotate my fingers, rotate my wrist. So I got my little bit of a power stance here and then I'm able to reach without, without touching my body. So I'm able to reach boop, and just put that there. And again, I just drop, I don't have to do anything else. When you're draping the abdomen, this should be all the way up to your xiphoid and then the back side should be pubis. But when you're practicing, it's okay just to, just to cover the tape. It's probably good enough. You know, it gives you a few centimeters on either end. So the caudal drape or the caudal towel is done in the same way. I got my pinch. You can look at it from the front. Pinch, rotate, fold. See how you can see my fingertips kind of? And then when I do my fold, they disappear. You don't want any fingertips exposed. Then my right foot's forward and I can place that without breaking sterility. Now, for the next side, it's trickier. There's a few different things that you can do, right? So some surgeons are actually pretty good at doing the normal way and reaching, place it appropriately, very ergonomic. So the other thing some surgeons will do well, okay, I'll just walk around and place it there like normal, you know? Sure, you could do that, but it's not ideal to walk around because, you know, you're at a greater risk from contaminating your assistant or anybody else around, your anesthesia person. So we'll show you how to do it just from one side reaching across the table, which is a little bit safer. So now instead of having your fold facing away from you, you want to face it towards yourself. Okay, so I can see my fold. I'm going to show you here. Okay, and then you want to do rather than like this, your thumb and the next finger are going to switch. So you're going to have your thumb forward and your index finger behind, and these fingers still free, okay? And so you just kind of pinch it like that to see how I have a little bit of a folded edge, okay? And then with my, with my thumb and my index finger, I'm gonna make, or my, with the rest of my fingers, I'll make my fist. Then I'll kind of bring my hands together, my thumbs together to make a little hammock there. See how that makes like a little hammock? Then I'll straighten my fingers out over top of that hammock, okay? So you don't want to straighten them out on this side, okay? You need to have this folded enough that, and then relax enough that you can get it on this side, okay? So again, not, not this side, but that side, okay? Then this next motion is kind of a double motion. There's a roll, okay? But a lot of times students will stay like this. So my palms shouldn't be like I'm high-fiving you. When I roll, my hands come down. See how my fingers are pointing downward and my wrists are up and my elbows are a little bit up? Okay, so that's what you need to do. Okay, so now the fold's towards you. You wanna get thumb and index finger. These are free, you curl them in. 
okay? And then I kind of bring my, my hands together, my thumbs together to get a little hammock action going. And then I straighten out my fingers so that the back side are on the opposite side of this, okay? You don't want them still on this side folding the material, you want to come on top of it. So you really have to kind of rotate your wrist to get on top of it like that. And then you're gonna point your palms down and your fingers down at the same time. So when I rotate, I'm going palms and fingers down at the same time. Palms and fingers down at the same time. So that's what it looks like on my end, okay? And my hands are, are fairly free and now, you don't want to drag, this is where you can mess up, you don't want to drag or anything like that. You just gently lift it over, you can kind of give it a little bit of a flick as you go. So I just pinch, a little hammock, curl and, curl and fold it, and then I kind of give it that little flap. And then I bring it straight right where I want, between and there. Again, I'll use my thumbs sometimes to kind of point downward, and then I just let go with my fingers. You don't want to rotate out. You don't want to do this, touch bad stuff. You want to just, okay, so that's kind of fling it out. This doesn't matter. If this was folded like this and like that, it really doesn't matter. You're gonna put a drape over this, so don't worry about having to fix stuff, okay? It is sterile, but it's just, it's just not worth fixing. As long as this area looks good, then you're good. So next, you're gonna take back cost towel clamps. Okay, these are your back cost towel clamps. And you're gonna grab the edges of the towels and just a little bit of skin. You should be able to just kind of pick it up. One click is all you need and then you just let it go, okay? So you'll do that on four corners. And on the four corners, you can either reach your body around. You can still do this fairly safely. You still have plenty of room. You're not gonna break sterility there. See how you guys still have plenty of room? And here as well. If you're up for a little more challenging handwork, and it's mnemonic, these are called back hoss towel clamps. And I remember that because you can backhand these. So normally you'd put your ring finger and thumb in them like this. So what you'll do to backhand them is just rotate the instrument 180 degrees. And then you can reach across and do that while you still have your hips back and it's a little easier. So I'm usually just using the first little phalanx of my thumb and my ring finger there. And I use kind of my, my knuckle of my thumb and then you can see my ring finger kind of gets in there to help out and assist a little bit with that other ring. So you just place it and drop it. And then if you want to keep practicing this, I would just keep doing that. Reach across, practice, reach across, practice. And it's, it's a little awkward at first, but you'll get the hang of it. There we go. All right, so next, we're gonna have our drape. This drape is sterile, so it really doesn't matter, but I'm gonna show you how to open one of these. Like I can handle this, because the whole outside's sterile, but I'm gonna show you really quick how to open something like this if it wasn't entirely sterile. You'll always have these little tags, and you can open those tags and pull them out. And now everything inside of this is sterile. So there's gonna be another little corner. Each little corner has to be done. There's one corner, another corner, and another corner. Now we have our sheet, our drape, okay? This we don't need anymore, get rid. So you have your drape, okay? It's gonna open like a book, All right? So when you open it like a book, you wanna make sure that you're on the centerfold, which is going to have where you unfold. So this tells you when you lay this down, you want to unfold this outwards and that way. So you want to make sure you put it the correct way, because if you put it this way, you'll have a long drape that way and, and short on the sides. So when you're doing this alone and you don't have somebody to help you on the other side, you have to do this just kind of one corner at a time. So what you'll do is so that you don't drag everything. You want this to stay right here, okay? Because you don't want to accidentally drag this back and forth from your non-sterile sites to your sterile sites. So you wanna keep this in place. I usually do the head side first because the table is a little more complicated. The head side you just drop, but I'll show you that in a minute. So my hand is going to be blocking this for me. And then I'm gonna grab just this. It's like, ah, oh, like your little hoff. Grabbing just the top of this, okay? So you don't, you don't grab like this. You don't grab a bunch of stuff. Just just the top little bit, as much stuff between you and, and dirtiness as possible. And now I'm gonna open this, my hand's gonna go up and that way, and I'm gonna drop. When I do that though, you'll notice the other side, because there's no one there, is less controlled. So I don't trust this corner like I would normally after the fact, and I'll show you that in a moment. So I'm gonna hold this, lift this up, and stretch it that way. See how it opened it up, okay? 
Now, this side, I don't want to grab, this is close to the table. If I grab here, I'm going to break sterility. If I grab here, I'm going to break sterility. So what I want to do to open that side is kind of grab in a safe place. Okay, so I'll grab this corner, first corner here. There's a couple corners in there. Okay, so you just want to grab this, this top one. You don't want to grab them both. So I'll grab this top one and I'm just going to shake that out. Good, okay. And I'll do this on the opposite side just to show you, but normally I would do my same side of the table both times. So I just want to pin the bottom here so that I can make sure that the drape will completely unfold. This in place and do the same. This is going to go that way, take a little shake, and then I'm going to have this edge here folded in so I don't really love it, pulling it out that way and over. Once you have the drape open along there on your Mayo table, you're going to place your instrument pack and put it on top there to weigh down your drape and hold it in place. And then. I'll switch hands again to try and finish off. Remember, this is all safe. The drape is all safe, but this is not safe. Don't do that. Don't do that. But I would go in here and just, yeah, you know, flick it off there. But this is safe. I can touch all this now. There's no issues with that. This guy. If you're going to fix it, you don't want to approach from top, kind of the non-sterile area. So you want to come from the inside and just flick it out there. So that was a safe way to manipulate that. And now you have your sterile field here. Good. So again, you don't want to move your drape around because let's say there's dirty hair here and if I drag this one way or another it's going to drag filth into our surgical site. Next we can palpate where our towel clamps are. Then we use our OR scissors with the blunt side down to cut the drape. And I use the blunt side down. I usually cut out a nice little rectangle here. And it's, it's okay to have a little bit of towel exposed. That's totally fine to have towel exposed. And then I just go and I take my towel clamps and I just, you just want to grab over your previous one. So you don't not grab in a deep bite. Hold, hold this right where you want it. Okay. So now your patient is draped. You have a continuous sterile field from your instruments to your surgical site. And now that your table, you can see that the table's covered. I would never make this motion in real life, but now you can see that the table's covered. I can approach the table now. My butt can finally go from here to here. And I can be right up into my surgical floor. And you want your table to be so that you can stand fairly tall and be doing work. So for me, I would have this table maybe a little bit elevated, probably to here. Um, and that's gonna be the best for your back. So now I can show you why we want to make sure we have that continuous sterile field there. You so let's say I pick up an instrument and drop it, it's still sterile, you know, versus if we didn't have this up there. It's kind of too mobile, it moves when you're moving, your instruments might get stuck there, they can drop through the table itself. So you want to make sure you have that continuous sterile field. Otherwise, you're more likely to break sterility. Now, I wouldn't do this again, you know, right now, this is breaking a ton of sterility, but just to set it back up for you, you can see this continuous sterile field that we have here going on. Once your drape is in place and you're done, your assistant will bring you one of these sterile light handles and it has a, a button on it. It clicks in place once it's in there. So you just do this and then gently jiggle it and push up until it clicks and then it should be stuck there and now you can move your instrument light however you'd like to. This is really the only time we'll reach kind of up above our heads um, is to move, move the lights. And then when the surgery is over and you're ready to remove it, push this button and you jiggle it out. Once you're done in lab, you can, uh, you can undress your patient and you can save your drape. So you can take your drape home with you and fold it up and you can save your gown and your gloves so that you can practice at home. Because practice makes perfect.